Are you able to hear me? Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hopefully, everyone is uh, able to hear me properly. Please let me know if you have any difficulties. Thanks for joining and uh, let's continue the web series on the propeller theory and performance. Today we will continue the part, the, the third theory which is the combined blade element momentum theory. In the last class we tried to discuss the popular theories, two basic theories. One is the momentum theory and the other one is the blade element theory. In this class, we will spend some more time on the rest of the theory. That's the blade momentum, combined blade momentum, blade element momentum theory. Then we will spend some time on the performance uh, of the propellers. And we also spend some time on the propeller charts and the procedure of the design. Then we will spend some more time on the selection of the propellers. At the end, we will spend some time on the uh, propeller noise, even though it's a very big subject, but we will try to spend some time understanding the what is the basics of the noise. Then in the end, we will uh, try to uh, connect to the next topic, that's the fans, uh, ducted fans. We have gone through these things. Uh, in the last class, we have discussed about the momentum theory and then uh, we spent some time in understanding the blade element theory also. This is a blade element theory. We walked through this uh, blade element theory in the last class. And uh, here we try to see the characteristic, but we will spend more time today on the characteristics. Probably there was some question about the negative thrust at the root. We will spend some more time on this today. Yeah. Let's come to the today's main session that is on the combined momentum and the blade element theory. Uh, in the last class, we understood the, both the theories as, you, as we discussed yesterday. Momentum theory is very, very simple very easy to understand but uh, there are so many assumptions it doesn't really give the uh, any uh, any input for the blade shape blade angles and it doesn't really give uh, it's basically very very fundamental theory 
where we assume the uh, uh, propeller as the um, actuator disc just giving some energy to the flow without disturbing we assume that as a porous and all so that's the limitation of the uh, momentum theory but it's very simple to understand uh, uh, a basic uh, thrust force and the um, uh, power required that's nothing but the um, how much torque or power uh, need to be supplied to the uh, propeller then we also spend some time on the blade momentum uh, uh, blade element theory uh, which is really uh, very good theory compared to the momentum theory Thus, uh, it gives the more details about the blade we have seen the blade element uh, theory uh, basically uh, uh, the principles are drawn from the aerodynamics point of view we tried to understand the um, uh, flow physics basically there with the velocity triangles now let's uh, concentrate more on the the third theory which is the combination of the first two that's the momentum and the blade element theory it is basically blade element theory but we are adding something more from the momentum theory so it is the combination of the blade element theory and the momentum theory it is used to calculate the local forces which are the uh, forces which arise from the induced velocities that we will see try to understand that so it is the extension of the blade element theory which is re uh, useful for uh, calculate the local forces on the propeller or the wind turbine uh, blade as we discussed the same theory applies for the wind turbine also uh, but theory, there is a wind turbine you are extracting the energy from the working fluid but whereas in the propeller it's in the other way we are giving energy to the fluid but the concept is more or less the same yeah uh, as it is mentioned here the blade element theory is combined with the momentum theory to elevate or answer some of the difficulties in calculating the induced velocity at the rotor this shows the the theory basically here it is uh, similar to the one what we have seen for the blade element theory uh, this is our uh, aerofoil this is a, a propeller cross section this is our propeller cross section and we know the forces which is uh, this is the um, uh, act, uh, yeah uh, here uh, in the last class we have seen this is with v infinite that's the axial flow velocity that's the axial flow velocity here axial flow velocity here that's a v infinite and the blade is having the some rotational velocity that is the omega that's a, which is nothing but 2 pi nr basically 2 pi nr so that is the omega this is the uh, uh, angular velocity basically so this is the axial velocity which is coming uh, from the frame stream and this is the angular velocity and ultimately the blade uh, the flow enters the blade with the resultant velocity this is a resultant velocity this is a resultant velocity in the class uh, in the last class uh, we tried to see something about the uh, induced velocity so here in the blade element theory we didn't really consider the induced velocity now we are trying to consider the induced velocity when you consider the induced velocity here so that's the induced velocity here basically when you consider the induced velocity the resultant velocity or the flow the way it enters into the blade will change so that's the only difference between the blade element and the uh, uh, combined momentum and blade element theory so basically in the earlier class we have seen this is the uh, resultant force this is a resultant force vr vr is the resultant force but now when we consider the vi vro is the resultant velocity so this is the only change this uh, we try to see the uh, zoomed part here so this is the induced velocity induced velocity is nothing but the velocity which is given to the uh, our uh, propeller 
So when you consider the induced velocity here, so it has the components, uh, there's a tangential and the um, axial, axial induced components. So when you consider the, this uh, axial uh, induced velocity, the, now the resultant velocity will change. Instead of this, we are, now the resultant velocity is V R naught. So we are including the induced velocity into the blade element theory. That's the only difference between the uh, combined moment and blade element to the blade element theory. So when we include the induced velocity, the um, uh, angles will change instead of the phi. Now our resultant velocity is V R naught. V R naught is the resultant velocity when we consider the V i. Okay. So with with respect to V R naught, V R naught, this is a new angle, phi naught. Phi naught is the new angle. In uh, blade element, it we consider only phi. Now when we consider induced velocity, this is a uh, this is an angle phi naught, and V R naught is the resultant velocity, and corresponding there is a change in the uh, angle of attack basically alpha. So alpha without vi, this is the alpha. And when we consider the vi, this is the new alpha. So these are the changes. Ultimately, this is the blade uh, angle basically. That's a beta is the geomet uh, blade geometrical angle beta. That's probably, it's not really changing. Only thing is the flow angles. By considering the vi, the flow angles are getting changed. Okay, so the difference, I am just uh, uh, trying once again to uh, summarize here. The difference between the blade element and the blade moment, uh, blade element moment theory is the angles. In the blade element theory, we are not considering Vi. In the present theory, we are considering the Vi, induced velocity. Because of this induced velocity, the resultant velocity will change and correspondingly, the uh, flow angles will change. So now the new flow angles are alpha naught and the phi naught, phi naught. These are the only changes. I'm just uh, passing a minute here and trying to see whether you are having any difficulties. Please uh, drop your uh, uh, comment or the difficulty. If you are facing any difficulty, put it in the live chart. I will, I'm just going through the live chart. I'm not really seeing the, any difficulties in the live chart. So I'm going ahead assuming that you are all clear and you are able to hear me properly. So when we change these things, uh, this is again from the velocity triangles. Uh, the earlier, without considering the Vi, this is a resultant velocity. That's what we have seen for the blade element theory that is nothing but uh, vr is equal to square root of this is omega omega r omega r square plus v square this is the uh, axial component of the uh, free stream 
Now, when we consider the VI, that's the induced velocity, now VR is getting modified as the VR naught. VR naught is the uh, square root of VR square plus VI square. So this is a new resultant velocity. Correspondingly, uh, there will be changes in the uh, resultant uh, uh, velocities and the flow angles. And this is the new uh, phi naught. Phi naught is equal to phi plus uh, theta. That uh, theta is uh, again, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a tangent of the V i by V r naught. That's from the um, previous velocity triangles. One can easily understand. So this is the new angles, phi naught and V r naught. And this is the uh, actual design procedure. How do we do? How do we design or how do we estimate the performance of the existing propeller? Uh, probably uh, you could have learnt uh, uh, in calculating the Reynolds number in the fluid mechanics and the aerodynamics. So uh, we always start from the uh, non-dimensional quantity uh, which is simulates the real flow. So Reynolds number, again, uh, this is the omega r. Omega r is nothing but the velocity here. And uh, we calculate the Reynolds number based on the card, card of the um, uh, each aerofile. So Reynolds number is equal to uh, rho v, uh, rho v r, r, rho v l by mu, rho v d by mu. That's uh, for the internal flows, we take the diameter as the uh, characteristic length. But uh, whereas in the um, um, aerofile, we will take the chord as the characteristic length. So this is a kind of the Reynolds number. Once you know the Reynolds number, generally, uh, as we discussed, um, blade element theory, we consider the different profiles with known um, lift and uh, drag characteristics. So generally, uh, lift and drag characteristics are um, given in terms of the Reynolds number. So that's what we are mentioning here. Once we know the lift and drag characteristics here, and um, uh, this is the way we are uh, calculating the um, uh, from the blade element theory. This is a blade element theory. This is the thrust force. This is uh, we discussed this in the uh, yesterday's class. Uh, that's the, we derived this uh, equation also in the yesterday's class. And uh, this is from the uh, momentum theory. This also we derived last class. Only thing is uh, we are um, uh, changing the VR with the uh, new VR naught. That is uh, from the uh, the new velocity component which is uh, given from the uh, induced velocity. So that's the only change. Other than it's the same as the one what we derived yesterday. So here in the blade element momentum theory, we try to use the both the things. From the blade element theory, this is the torque force. And the from the momentum theory, this is the torque force, but both are same. When we try to um, equal those two, then we are trying to get the relation for the VI, induced velocity. This induced velocity, uh, uh, we are just trying to uh, equating these two and um, we are getting the relation for the induced velocity. So uh, this depends on the number of blades and we are not, uh, probably we will spend some time in the design in the class, next class. But uh, keep it in, uh, at this moment, uh, just to try to understand this is the VI, how to calculate the induced velocity. But here, this is not the uh, simple to calculate the VI because in this equation, VI is existing on the both the sides. VI is here and VI is here. So it's not the straightforward uh, for solving the VI here because it is appearing on both the sides. Even though other other factors are known, but VI, you, we don't know the VI, so this is a little difficult. So generally what we do is for such kind of the situations, we use the iterative method. So we start with the guess value or the initial estimate for the VI and we keep that VI 
and we get the uh, new vi and again in the next iteration we keep the new vi here and try to calculate the vi based on this so we keep doing this kind of the iteration till we get the same values uh, old and new so that's the iterative way we need to do for the uh, induced velocity here yeah so this all we have seen in the yesterday's class dt we derived lot last time the same thing i am using only thing is i am just changing the vr instead of the vr i am putting the vr not this is a new resultant velocity we are not squared so other than that it's a more same thing so this is what iteration what we have discussed we kept doing and so that uh, the difference between the old and the new is um, uh, very negligible or uh, uh, whatever the tolerance you are permitting that much we can we can provide So uh, probably we will spend some time in the next class on the exercise on the design of the propeller, if time permits. Otherwise, we will try to understand the theory uh, performance of the uh, propeller in this class. The performance parameters for the propeller, uh, these, uh, these are the three performance parameters we prefer for the propellers. One is the thrust coefficient. All these are the non-dimensional numbers. You know, for the performance, we always try to prefer uh, the non-dimensional quantities. Actual quantities are thrust, torque. Uh, these are the quantities. But uh, many times we use the non-dimensional quantity so that uh, we can avoid the some uh, dimensional characteristics. So for that purpose, generally these are the thrust uh, parameters or coefficients we use for the performance. One is the thrust coefficient, second one is the torque coefficient, and the third one is the efficiency. So performance characteristics will contain two of these things, and the other one we keep changing. So the thrust force is the non-dimensional. This is the way what we do non-dimensional. Uh, this is represented with the CT, thrust coefficient. Thrust coefficient is equal to thrust force divided by rho n squared d to the power of 4. This we get it from the dimensional analysis, you know, from the uh, uh, units if you do, it will become the uh, uh, non-dimensional quantity. So this is a force and uh, when you do the, uh, uh, you know, units, you will see this is a, this is a way of the non-dimensional number. And the second one is the torque coefficient. This is the CQ. This is the torque we say and the coefficient we represent with the c cq again uh, this is obtained with uh, from the torque q is the torque torque what we are supplying to the propeller this is output and this is a input basically so this also uh, q by rho n squared d to the power of 5 and the efficiency efficiency is the uh, output by input basically so that's uh, we discussed last time uh, in the yesterday's class. Uh, this is the output and this is the input. From these two, we will find the uh, uh, this is the efficiency. And here we are using the some new term uh, J. I will explain you more in the next slide. This is the um, uh, non-dimensional uh, uh, velocity. I will explain you in the next uh, uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, before going further, uh, we try to see some important uh, factors in the uh, uh, propeller. Propeller diameter, propeller pitch, and the propeller number of uh, blades in the propeller. These are also important factors when you are designing a propeller. Uh, pitch means generally just to try to imagine that your propeller is like a screw, and when in one rotation, how much it goes forward that is called as the pitch so pitch of the impeller the the pitch of the impeller is 2 pi r times the tan beta and here uh, you try to uh, we will spend some more time on the propeller types uh, propellers are generally two kinds one is the fixed pitch that means uh, uh, it will not change the pitch will not change but the other one is the variable pitch. Nowadays, for the high 
um, high performance we go with the variable pitch so the pitch will change corresponding to the requirement so variable pitch uh, propellers are also uh, we use in the um, applications uh, this is the yeah uh, this is the pitch equation pitch is equal to 2 pi r times the tan beta so pitch depends on the um, your radius radius of the propeller so how long it is how uh, what is the radius of the propeller and the this is a blade angle that we have seen in the this slide beta tan beta so this is a beta actually you can see here So that is nothing but the geometric blade pitch angle, we say. So obviously, uh, from the geometry, what we have seen in the la uh, last slide. So the more the beta, obviously pitch will be more, and beta, uh, tan beta will be there. And again, uh, it depends on the radius. So this is the pitch of the uh, propeller. And the other part is um, uh, the power required. Uh, we all discussed last time uh, one, uh, to get the more thrust and the uh, more power is required obviously and for the thrust force we have seen uh, yesterday's class it depends on the diameter so the general way to increase the uh, thrust force is either to increase the number of blades or number of uh, uh, diameter of the blade but here please keep in your mind the power required is um, related to the uh, fifth power of the diameter so if you double the diameter of the propeller the power required for the same uh, same rotation if you are giving the power required is 32 times so it's not the uh, uh, geometrically scaled one it is a power of five but whereas in the blades it's a proportional basically so the more the blades the more the uh, uh, more the number of blades it's um, more power uh, basically so this is the uh, small um, relation you know p2 equal to p1 into b2 by b1 this is a new blades and the old blades so this is the way we need to work out but keep in your mind the power is always um, um, proportional to the fifth power of your diameter so we need to work out um, uh, how much diameter we need to keep and um, and what are the number of blades so this is a kind of the relation between the diameter and the uh, number of blades. So all these parameters are uh, required when you are doing the design of the propellers. So pitch, diameter and the number of blades. Pitch depends on the blade angle. Diameter, anyhow it's an independent one but uh, uh, power required is um, proportional, fifth power uh, to the diameter. And uh, um, before going further, uh, we need to consider the various losses here. In the propeller, there will be losses basically, losses in the sense, uh, whatever the assumptions we made in the theory, that's not really holds good for the um, uh, in actual. So there will be obviously the performance, what we obtain from the theory always be higher than the actual ones. So we need to... Uh, we need to understand the what all the assumptions we made and the corresponding consequences so these are the uh, losses various losses we understand here losses due to non-uniform thrust loading over the blade length yeah along the blade length thrust is not same it is not the uniform thrust from the uh, uh, hub, uh, root to tip that we have seen in yesterday's class so here probably I will just show you once again we will discuss something more today also yeah this is the uh, um, along the blade uh, length this is a root and this is a tip and the torque is not constant torque uh, gradually raises gradually raises and reaches to the maximum and from the tip it's a sudden dip you can see here here if you understand this uh, probably we will spend some time more in uh, down the line also but uh, uh, just keep in your mind that uh, the uh, torque developed on the lower half is very less compared to the upper half so uh, 
you know half of the diameter and the towards the uh, trailing you will have the more torque more torque is here not really much here yeah uh, blade uh, so this is not the uniform loading or thrust loading is uh, uh, not the same so it it, it induces uh, some losses blade in interference loss that's also uh, we discussed last time uh, theory we see as we increase the blades you will get the more uh, thrust force and all but it's not true uh, blade to blade interference will be there so the more the number of blades you will have the more number of uh, interference and that also depends on your um, uh, blade angle okay and the other thing is the profile uh, profile drag as it is having some surface so that also uh, introduce some drag force so this is also not covered in the theory but because of all these things the real benefit will be lesser than the what you expect okay changes in the flow properties compressibility effect little compressibility uh, you know earlier um, in the theory we assume that as a completely incompressible but there will be always a very small change in the density so that also contributes to the losses yeah now we will spend some time on the real characteristics of a propeller uh this is a j what we have seen in the efficiency what we covered in the last slide j is nothing but advance ratio this advance ratio is a, again a non dimensional uh, quantity it represents the um, relative free stream fluid speed to the propeller tip speed free stream fluid temp, uh, speed means it's corresponding to the your uh, flight flight velocity so it is the non dimensional parameter which relates the your flight velocity to the propeller velocity propeller speed propeller tip speed you know that uh, as the um, uh, diameter increases the propeller speed even though rpm is same but omega r as the r increases the propeller speed will change along with the radius so here we are taking the tip tip speed okay here uh, this is very important uh, uh, try uh, for the understanding purpose uh, this is a kind of the um, non dimensional speed ratio that's the uh, uh, speed of your uh, aircraft to the speed of your propeller okay maybe in the next uh, i will show you uh, next slide what uh, what's uh, j is basically it's a non dimensional v by uh, basically in simple terms if i want to say this is a kind of the v by nd probably i will try to okay maybe i will show next time so this is the uh, um, non dimensional um, uh, speed ratio if you understand here it's uh, uh, very clear at the lower speeds of the your impeller or the um, uh, lower uh, non dimensional quantities the efficiency is very very low here as you increase the velocity relative velocities relative speeds the propulsive efficiency will increase and it reaches to maximum value ideally speaking it is supposed to be constant further but in reality it will not be there why it is not there we will discuss in the next slides in reality what happens is uh, it goes to a peak value and from there a, a further increase in your flight speed flight speed so it will drop down so when you are pre when you are designing a propeller uh, you know aircraft will uh, spend more time on the cruise so during the cruise time we try to have the more efficiency so that means the cruise velocity uh, corresponding to cruise velocity we try to keep the maximum efficiency maximum efficiency we try to keep it here but thing is that that efficiency will not be same at the starting that means uh, at the take off and all efficiency is very very less as the speed up speed goes up 
that means your um, flight is moving up and it is taking off and then uh, climbing and all the propeller efficiency will increase and uh, we try to keep the cruise here so that cruise uh, cruise will be for a long time so we always try to have the more efficiency at the cruise but uh, uh, even though it is lower here but it doesn't really affect much because the takeoff and the climbing time is very less compared to the cruise so while uh, preparing or making designing the propeller we need to keep in our mind we try to keep the cruise condition here but the interesting thing is Where, wherever the you have the maximum efficiency we don't have the maximum thrust force or maximum power requirement we all know that maximum requirement maximum thrust force and the maximum power will always happen at the at the zero velocity of the flight that means it's a take off take off uh, we all discussed in the class also maximum thrust force we require during the take off and the climb and the cruise it's comparatively less the thrust force required during the co uh, cruise is less compared to the take off and the climb so that's what you can see here uh, even the thrust uh, this is a thrust force so uh, with the flight velocity it will change and uh, this is having the maximum thrust will happen at some speed but not really at the thrust uh, uh, not really at the cruise point that's not required also basically okay and the more or less similar thing we will see for the um, uh, maximum power requirement the power requirement here uh, this is the maximum at the take off and uh, the requirement will slowly come down and uh, yeah uh, uh, this is uh, even cruise also we don't require the maximum power or the maximum thrust so this is very important uh, uh, propeller characteristics so we need to design the our propeller which will be in sync with your uh, engine and the aircraft so wherever you require the high thrust and all we need to sync that with the engine how much uh, how much power is uh, it, it can provide for the uh, from the engine so this is the uh, very important factors yeah uh, yeah this is the same as the one what we discussed uh, in the earlier class uh, earlier slide this is the ideal efficiency and this is the actual efficiency actual efficiency is always lesser than the your induced or uh, ideal efficiency because of the losses what we have discussed in the uh, last slide so ideal efficiency is uh, uh, more and uh, ideal efficiency reaches to the some optimum value and from there it will be it will be supposed to maintain constant but it will not happen really in actual this is the efficiency so this is the maximum efficiency point yeah it's more or less same thing uh, what we discussed and here i am just trying to show here the uh, thrust coefficient uh, uh, along with the root root tip this is the variation along the blade length here it is the variation along uh, with the speed speed of the aircraft but here this is a variation along the blade within the blade also it's not constant that's what we have discussed the torque and the thrust um, obtained from the blade is not constant from the root to tip uh, it's a maximum here and the maximum uh, torque also obtained here so that means near to tip uh, not exactly to the tip it's a 3/4 or 3/4 length of the your blade you will see the maximum thrust force and the maximum uh, torque and here we will see the uh, when uh, along the length of the blade root to tip this is a variation and this we have seen yesterday uh in reality you will see the some negative thrust uh the major reason for the, this is uh, uh, from the structural point of view basically at the root we will not be able to put the aerofoil really aerofoil shape there so because uh, they you know 
uh, we need to have a hub there and we are attaching this uh, propeller to the hub there you you don't have the sufficient space to keep the aerofoil aerofoil there so there will be losses there strength point of view it is required here uh, maybe i will just try to show the propeller once again here yeah here if you see here this is what we are saying at this location this is for strength point of view uh, uh, there will not be uh, it doesn't have the sufficient uh, cross section to keep the aerofoil so because of that we will see the some negative thrust force there yeah thrust force so that creates the negative thrust at the root again thrust will increase and it reaches to maximum here but keep in your mind maximum thrust location and the maximum torque uh, location may not be the same may not be at the same uh, element of your blade there will be small differences it happens there yeah uh, it's more uh, yeah, this is what i'm trying to say v by nd this is the j advance ratio so this is the velocity of the fluid and this is the your uh, blade diameter so basically it, uh, this is the n is the rpm speed of the uh, your uh, blade that is nothing but the propeller propeller speed so v by nd is the non dimensional uh, velocity advance ratio so velocity of the fluid that that uh, in cruise that uh, that will be equal to your velocity of the flight velocity of the flight divided by velocity of your blade propeller blade okay if you see this is for the low speed aircraft uh, propeller the characteristics will be like this it's the same as the one what we have discussed last side but here we are trying to show you the values v by nd v by nd is around 1 to 1.2 that means your flight velocity this is your flight velocity v and the uh, propeller velocity that's nd is more or less same when when these are same you will get the maximum efficiency eta eta cap and these are the uh, thrust force ct and this is the uh, power as we discussed the power requirement will be more very high during the take off and it, the power requirement slowly comes down comes down and this is the nature how it goes and this is the torque force that's all, uh, sorry uh, this is the thrust force ct that's also maximum thrust we require during the take off maybe during the climb then after it's required uh, it's slowly we need to come down okay and the cruise point this is the uh, cp ct values again it's more or less same thing but it, with the high speed aircraft propeller uh with the high speed propeller uh, curves looks similar but only thing is these values uh, moves forward here um, uh, j value advance ratio it's around 2 uh, 2.5 2.6 whereas in the low speed we have seen it's around 1 or 1.2 but whereas the high speed it goes to the 2.5 2.6 yeah uh, i will pause a minute here uh, till now if you have any questions probably we will answer those things and uh, then we will go forward uh, i am passing for your questions please drop me your questions if you have any difficulties
is the audio you have still some disturbance I am not seeing the questions till now. Probably we will. I will go through. Uh, we will continue and uh, probably at the end uh, again we will stop for the questions. We'll spend some time more on the noise part. This is the one of the limitation for the propellers. Uh, we are, uh, as you all know that, even though it has the um, uh, high efficiency, propulsive efficiency, but uh, the problem here is uh, we uh, for the long range and high speed uh, aircraft, uh, we can't really go with the propellers. The one of the issues is the noise, propeller noise. Um, when the propeller spins at the full speed, the tips of the blade can reach the speeds near to the speed of the sound. That is kind of the Mach of one. So when the blade speed reaches to that Mach number, that Mach, uh, Mach of one, speed of sound, it creates the drag, wave drag, and that is the fundamental barrier that creates the, uh, uh, that's the kind of the reason for the very loud sound. This is basically wave drag. That wave drag creates the sound and that creates the lot of losses in the pressure loss. That's why we see at the tip, after just after the tip, the uh, you know, uh, efficiency drops down completely, very sharply uh, drops down. So because of this um, uh, wave drag problem. So 
this is one of the big difficulties with the uh, prop uh, propellers. Uh, there are some ways to uh, reduce the noise. Uh, one of the may, uh, one of the most popular way is uh, uh, increase the number of blades rather than increasing the speed. So probably for the same speed and increase the number of blades, but again there will be limitation. You can't go to the many number of blades because uh, as you increase the number of blades, interference will be there and that will uh, reduce your performance. But to certain extent. Uh, for the instead of the two blade you can go for the three blade or four blade or five blade so they even though uh, you don't really go with the uh, speed in the uh, change in the speed but still you can uh, increase your thrust force so increasing the number of blades is the very effective way uh, compared to the high speed uh, the second one is the called of the Skimeter prop, it's basically what we are doing is aerodynamic design. High performance jet airplanes uh, will have the, this kind of the um, uh, no, uh, noise reducing. Basically, we are trying to have the uh, very profiled, uh, aerodynamically profiled uh, sections for the propeller. Near the tip of the blade uh, retards the formation of the sudden onset shock waves. So uh, it's the technique to avoid the shock wave near the tip. So if you if you are able to avoid the shock wave at the tip, then the um, uh, uh, obviously noise will be come down. And the other way, the uh, latest way is having a duct duct around the ever propeller keeping a closer conduit so this is the um, we call that as the ducted fans or the ducted propellers so this is called a shroud it's a we also call this as a kind of a shroud so we are keeping the fan in a shroud so by keeping this we can reduce the um, noise to a certain extent. Yeah, uh, a ducted fan is the propeller is mounted within a uh, cylindrical shroud or not, nothing like uh, nothing but it's a kind of a duct actually. So that's why we call that as the ducted fans. So it prevents the losses in the thrust from the tips. Again, uh, tip losses also will be reduced because of that. Uh, we use the, these fans, um, ducted propellers or ducted fans um, in aircraft, airboats, hovercraft, all those things. Uh, nowadays, you, uh, uh, you all know that even for the drones and all, we will use the, these ducted propellers nowadays. Ducted fans normally have more and shorter blades, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, because of, uh, due to reduction is the noise and the um, um, reduction in the losses generally we go with the shorter blades not really for the very long blade very long blades again uh, keeping a duct is a difficult part so operating speed of the unshrouded unshrouded means no shroud propeller is uh, that's have the limitation but having this uh, shroud around your propeller which uh, increases your operability and these are the some of the um, uh, pictures where uh, you know uh, we use these such kind of the ducted fans or ducted propellers you see this is the propel uh, here you have a propeller but around that we are keeping a duct here okay and here also you can see here these are the uh, this is a propeller based calling it it's for the vertical takeoff and here we are having the uh, around the propeller you have a duct here so these are the ducts on the both sides here here propeller is not here it's a propeller is kept here actually and other thing is by having this one you can uh, vector vector this and we can move the location uh, orientation basically so that you can have the um, control on the vectoring 
and this is another application you can see the duct here this is also duct here actually this is a propeller part and you have the big duct here yeah uh, again uh, these are the kind of the advantages as we have seen um, these are more efficient than the unducted uh, fans or the propellers because the blade tip losses are reduced here smaller diameter compared uh, suppose for the same thrust uh, you need a smaller diameter uh, um, propeller now with a duct so that's the other thing uh, again we discussed this uh, thrust vectoring thrust vectoring is uh, uh, is uh, available with the ducted fans where you you can orient the fans section and uh, other thing you know that's a safety on the ground safety is enhanced because of the uh, duct around the fan but it has the some limitations again keeping a fan uh, keeping a duct or shroud uh, cruise uh, efficiency is uh, reduced than uh, without a propeller because uh, they the propeller uh, it doesn't really have the much losses there during the cruise it doesn't really create the high thrust or the high, uh, high power there so in that case uh, shroud may not be a good option there and the other thing is uh, uh, for getting the good performance you need to maintain a very small clearance clearance means the gap between your uh, blade and the shroud so uh, shroud diameter and the, your blade diameter the difference between these two if it is so high and uh, you know there will be losses if it is so small your, bla uh, your blade will touch with the shroud so it will have the problem your blades will uh, uh, get destroyed actually it, it gets broken basically so maintaining the small clearance it's very important uh, again it requests the high rpm and uh, it uh, adds some vibration problems uh, so we need to have the methods to control the vibration again here other thing is it adds to the weight in addition the uh, propellers you need to have the duct also so you are adding some material so weight will increase uh, at high angle of attack force of duct will stall and produce a drag these are the some of the disadvantages of the ducted fan so we try even though as I mentioned um, uh, noise is a very very uh, vast subject and uh, uh, which is the which requires a lot of attention nowadays but still because of the time we are not really spending that much time uh, just uh, at this moment try to understand uh, ducting is generally provided to enhance the performance of the propeller and uh, to reduce the noise okay so increase the thrust noise reduction improved safety vector thrust all these are the advantages of the ducted fans whereas the disadvantages is the weight penalty and the you have the more area now so drag will increase and uh, we will spend more time in the uh, next lecture uh, inlet shapes and all but just for uh, for the time being just keep the uh, two kinds of the ducts we will have uh, one is the um, decelerating the decelerating shroud shroud shapes you can see the change in the shape one is like this decelerating uh, as the name says uh, it's deaccelerate so that means velocity will come down here actually and this is the accelerating shroud accelerating shroud here actually we will spend more time in the inlet uh, next session on the inlets yeah this also probably we will cover in the next class uh, this is a comparison of the duct fans with the unducted fans. Okay. Ducted fans have the more performance compared to the unducted fans. This is the free impeller. That means without any duct. And these are with the ducted ones. You can see the higher thrust for the same RPM 
you are getting the more thrust here. Uh, with that, we try to understand the uh, characteristics of the propeller. Now, uh, we will spend some time on the design aspects. Even though this course or this, um, uh, this presentation doesn't cover complete design aspects, but what are the minimum things we require for the design I am trying to cover in this session. These are the kind of the um, uh, propeller charts uh, as we discuss the performance param there are three major performance parameters uh, one is the efficiency and the other one is the um, torque uh, second one third one is the um, that's the um, propulsive uh, power uh, basically propulsive force okay so these are the uh, three things and again we try to keep them in the non dimensional form uh, we all know that non-dimensional quantity depends on the non-dimensional uh, property. So that's why we prefer to have the non-dimensional speed here. That's a non-dimensional speed. Uh, we discussed that this is the advanced ratio. Advan how much, what's the velocity of the uh, flight to the velocity of the propeller. Uh, here, the interesting factor is uh, with uh, different blade ratios, uh, blade angles. This is a 15 degree, 20 degree, 25 degrees and all. If you see here, uh, when you are looking for the higher uh, uh, speeds, higher flight speeds, this uh, smaller degree, smaller blade degree will not work. You need to go for the higher degree, higher blade angle. So that's why probably you could have seen that uh, for the high velocity blade, you will have the high twisted and the high blade angle propellers and uh, for each of those things uh, more or less uh, same efficiency if you see here efficiency maximum efficiency it reaches around 0 0.8 0 0.9 this is the propulsive efficiency uh, 0 0.8 0 0.9 is the maximum but uh, but here if you see here uh, with a change in the um, blade angle how the efficiency change here if you see if you are having the 60 degree blade angle but your uh, flight velocity is very low then propulsive efficiency is very low here i am just seeing the for 60 degree and it is the takeoff at takeoff its efficiency is low and during climbing climbing and all it's always low but whereas 15 degree it picks up it picks up faster so what I want to convey here is at different speeds for getting these higher efficiencies we need to change the blade angles. So this is what we say variable pitch or vari variable pitch you are able to change the blade angle basically uh, uh, blade angle in a sense pitch you can change by rotating the blade you can uh, you can change the pitch so that's why for the high performance we go with the variable pitch propellers so that means at the cruise it will have one kind of the uh, pitch at takeoff it will try to behave like this okay it, it, it's behave like six and at the cruise probably at high speeds it behaves like this so we need to have a kind of the variable pitch okay so this is what uh, variable pitch again it's similar to this but uh, here we are trying to put the uh, thrust coefficient this is propulsive thrust thrust coefficient we know that uh, take off you need high thrust and uh, as you go further and further the uh, thrust will come down this again uh, the third characteristics cp here instead of the ct cp here this is the um, power characteristics so this is the input characteristics and again here with the change in the blade angle uh, how the variation will change these are the standard um, charts we use um, for the um, uh, especially when you are designing the uh, propeller, new propeller, 
you need to be aware of these charts and based on these charts we need to uh, select the which profile we need to use and what's the pitch angle and all and these are uh, some of the blade profiles well established blade profiles are uh, just given here uh, naka profiles epler profiles selly clack clack wide uh, probably you you could have heard about uh, clark white i'm sure that you worked on this clark uh, clark white similarly uh, similarly nanka profiles uh, where we have the good data about the cl uh, that's a lift characteristics and drag characteristics you know that uh, blade element theory when you are working with the blade element theory you need to know about the lift and the drag characteristics so here he, he just have shown the propeller and the at different lengths uh, different profiles he has used you see here here cross section corresponds to this and as it moves away from here uh, the cross section got changed so element by element we need to take and uh, uh, for finding the thrust angle we need to find out the elemental and sum up all those things yeah other thing is uh, Uh, when you are selecting a propeller the other uh, important uh, parameter is, uh, is the speed power coefficient it is uh, probably someone who has worked on the uh, turbo missions or the uh, hydro turbo missions and all probably you know that uh, unit speed and the specific speed similar to that for propellers also we have the speed power coefficient this is again a kind of the non dimensional quantity we introduce uh, it is independent of your diameter so it is a uh, it is very very useful uh, parameter when you are designing or selecting a propeller what kind of the propellers you need to select for your application cs is uh, there's a speed power coefficient so it's a, it is uh, combining the speed that's nothing but n and the power coefficient that's related with your velocities yeah uh, this is the, the um, again the same thing we try to show here uh, j is the at um, non dimensional uh, speed and uh, this is the um, uh, non dimensional power coefficient so the beauty of this is it doesn't really look for the diameter initially so once we get and uh, get the selection of the propeller then we can work out the diameters so this is the another characteristic curve which relates with the cs versus efficiency okay uh, even though little hard to understand here but uh, uh, it's um, again cs is again a, uh, as it is mentioned here it's also part of the j but thing is we are bringing the cp also into this so these are with the efficiency curves with the different uh, blade ratios uh, blade angles blade scale yeah uh, other thing nowadays um, uh, people are using the uh, sometimes probably in some of the flights you might be seeing propeller on the front side some of the places uh, you see there's a propeller at the aft of the uh, your aeroplane so when you see the propeller on the front it's called a kind of uh, tractus we say and when we see this uh, at the aft side it's kind of the pushing pushing and the pulling these are the two varieties but function is more or less same thing only and uh, the other one nowadays people are working with the counter rotating uh, propellers in the counter rotating you will have the two propellers basically uh, uh, the second propeller is um, uh, on the behind of the first one but the as the name says counter rotating if one is rotating in the clockwise the next one will rotate in the opposite side so that has the some benefits but uh, 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 while designing the propeller you need to have the uh, fundamentals are same only sometimes uh, you need to rotate these uh, propellers with the different speeds then probably you need to use with the gear box for the uh, for uh, uh, direction change and the rotation change 
and there you use the swept blade. Details probably is very difficult to cover in this session. But uh, just aware of these uh, counter rotating push. -in. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the uh, session, I just uh, trying to close the session with the um, selection. When you are doing the selection, you should be aware of the your engine characteristics and the aircraft characteristics. So you need to have the proper. Uh, matching of the uh, your propeller with the aircraft and the engine so based on the, your uh, engine characteristics your propeller will change so the thrust ultimately the power is given by the engine only uh, the propeller power uh, that means the power available for the propeller is obtained from the engine power but there are some losses so that's why we use the uh, shaft efficiencies and the propeller also has some efficiency we include that propeller propeller efficiency ultimately this is the power what you get real power which is available for the your uh, propeller and the torque is uh, uh, it's the same as the engine torque but here uh, just keep in your mind the requirements will be different take off you have one kind of the requirements whereas the cruise you have the different kinds of the requirements when you are designing, you need to give more priority for a cruise because uh, your aircraft spends more time during the cruise. But at the same time, you should uh, cater the needs of the takeoff. During the takeoff, uh, our torque requirement is low, but we go for the high power requirement, high power, uh, to get that we will go for the high RPM. Your propeller will rotate with a very high RPM during the takeoff. Compared to the takeoff, cruise conditions are low RPM and the engine power requirement is low, but torque is high. So whenever you need the high torque, you try to go with the higher pitch. That means your blade angles will change. You rotate that blade angles. So that's where I'm trying to say uh, it's the variable pitch. Variable pitch is useful for uh, uh, different, uh, uh, useful for catering the different needs during the takeoff and the, during the cruise. You will have the more efficiency when you use the variable pitch. But keep this in your mind. The requirements will be different. But your propeller needs to serve the both the requirements. Yeah, I think that's the uh, end of the session today. Uh, I will open the session uh, for the questions. If you have any questions, please uh, drop me in chat. I will go through the your questions and try to see if I can answer. Let me know your questions. As it is already supplied to you, material is already supplied to you, go through that and try to understand once again. And if you have any difficulties, uh, let me know. Otherwise, go through the presentation once again. Anyhow, it will be saved in the YouTube. The same link will serve useful. You can use whenever you want.
any questions Uh, there is a question from Anand. Uh, he is asking about the where counter propellers are used. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the high performance and high speeds, uh, we go for the uh, counter rotating. It has the uh, benefits, uh, uh, performance benefits. Uh, it, it is nothing like uh, sequence of the two blades basically. You are adding some force by adding one more fan actually one more propeller What is PE in the last slide? There is a question from uh, Anirudh. Uh, this is the propulsive power actually, or engine power, engine power. PE is the engine power. E stands for the engine, engine power. At takeoff, we need the high uh, engine power. So this is a corresponding to this actually, P. Again, uh, the same question I think Anand is asking, where counter propellers are used? Uh, you know, uh, it's a kind of the boosting the uh, power uh, 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 propulsive power basically uh, instead of one rotor having the so many blades you are adding the one more uh, uh, one more row with the more number of blades for higher power requirement actually Any other questions? If there are no questions, uh, uh, let me stop here. And uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we will continue our sessions. Probably I will let you know when is our next session. And I will send you the... Uh, uh, timings and the uh, details soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Signing off.